Hey, sports fans and savages, welcome to the Greg Medford Show. Greg with you here, coming from the Phoenix, Arizona. Holy smokes, it's been a crazy couple of weeks, and uh, we haven't covered a lot of current events on the show. Today, we're going to talk uh, about stuff that's going on municipally in Scottsdale, Arizona, and you'll find these are the same challenges that are facing Marin County, and uh, and they're facing uh, White Plains, New York, and they're... Uh, they're, they're, these are the same kind of issues that are hitting you in your town too. So don't turn away just because it's local Arizona politics, because it's not politics so much as issues um, that are affecting us everywhere. And you know this is happening in the suburbs of Miami, and it's happening in Miami, and it's happening in Dallas, Texas, it's happening in Des Moines, Iowa, it's happening everywhere. So we're going to talk about it a little bit today in our continuing uh, series that's basically. The citizen soldier, third leg of the milk stool. The American milk stool. It's three legs, right? We talk about this all the time. First leg is uh, a, a people that have been given these inalienable human rights who give up willingly a little bit of them to a central authority to do some governance. But we give them up a little bit. And then the third leg of the milk stool between the, 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 the people and the ruling class the third leg of the milk stool is supposed to be a free and independent press. It was the very first thing in, in the Bill of Rights to get everyone to ratify the Constitution in 1789. And it wasn't the seventh thing. It wasn't the 11th thing. It was the first thing. And uh, a free and independent press, which we haven't had in a long time. Now, they're free to say whatever they want, but they're not being independent and they're not being objective. And it's problematic for the Republic. I argue the Republic is crumbling around us because there's nobody speaking truth to power and mass. So all we can do is pick up our musket and the musket these days is a microphone and the podcast. All we can do is pick up our musket one shot at a time, fire off some truth, hopefully infect a couple hundred people with truth who start infecting people who've been propagandized with truth. And that's the mission. So thanks for coming to the show today. We're going to talk about a bunch of things with Pam Carter. Uh, Pam is uh, our guest. She is running for Scottsdale City Council in Arizona. Now, for those of you who are around my age, you might have just come of age and fell in love with her sister. Now, I know she's tired of hearing about this, but this is, it's Wonder Woman's sister, which makes her some sort of wonderful, and we've got her here. So we're going to find out about it. Pam, thanks for coming to the show. Thank you, Greg. It's a, uh, wow, what an operation you have here at Medford Tool. My goodness, I have never seen anything like this. Your, uh, your whole setup is amazing. And uh, I was greatly impressed with your process, the fact that you are an America first um, for sure. company and uh, all, that you, all that you do for America and for our nation. I we were America it. first when America first wasn't cool yet. You know, <laughs> exactly. Donald Trump finally, he came on board mm -hmm. and I was like, hey, welcome to the raft. <laughs> right. Welcome to the madness. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been screaming this message for about 13 years now. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's part of what jumped our company ahead of line pretty quickly. So, Pam, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you grow up? Grew up right here in Arizona. I'm yeah. a native Arizonan. I grew up in Scottsdale. You did? And, yes. I uh, went to Arcadia High. Okay. And uh, I love this state and I love this city. The city of Scottsdale was where I went to school, grew up. And uh, I remember when Scottsdale was safe for families to walk along the canal. I mean, we used, we used to do crazy things so like go down into the canal bank and all that. And, Did you go jumping in the canal, swimming around? Uh, well, yeah. All right, okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, it was it was safe back then. You know, I grew up in Scottsdale as well, and I remember it being kind of a fun cow town. We were motorcycling and riding horses, and it was a lot wilder than it is now, which, you know, times have changed. That's fine. But it's gotten, it's really weird. As the Porsches and the Mercedes showed up, which I'm a fan of, uh, the politics shifted. And it went from being this very conservative, and it was America first before America, 
the, before absolutely. that became a thing. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's turned leftist, and I don't know what's happened. How is it that people who have the most benefited from capitalism are the first to turn on it? Do you think it's shame? Well, you know what it is, is first of all, seven people make all your decisions for what happens in Scottsdale. City Most count, people, the city, city council, council right. you've got six council members plus the mayor, and they basically pass all the zoning, all the business situations, and that's why I jumped in the race. I worked in the Trump campaign in 2020. I was the faith director for the state of Arizona for President Trump. Okay. And I've been criticized for that, of course, being a Trumper. Yeah, but oh well. you know what? I won my primary against uh, three other businessmen. And I'm now in a runoff for the third seat for the council. Uh, many of the council... Now you say a runoff, a r primary runoff because prim it's so close? No, or it's do you mean, general. Uh, or do you mean I'm general? in the general. Right, so I already won my, I'm already won my okay. primary. I and just I'm, wanted to make sure you said runoff and I said, oh. Yeah, so you're in, the, you're in the main mm -hmm. election yes, now for, for, okay. for the final seat. Yep. But um, so you have a left-leaning council. They're going to pass left-leaning policies. One of the things that bothered me the most uh, was the passing of the anti-discrimination ordinance. Most people don't even know about that. It was passed seven to zero. And what it does is it makes it a crime, basically, to if if I perceive anyone is persecuting me or just a perceived offense, yeah. I could get offended because you looked at me wrong and I can have you investigated. They nixed out the the Civil Rights Act of 1965, 1968, uh, 64 actually, and 1968, per, they just crossed that out and put this ordinance in place now where men can go in women's bathrooms women and men's well the, um, the executive can always overreach and then someone sues and and then the supreme court or the state state supreme court well this is a city ordinance it's a city ordinance right but i mean that's how you would challenge it has, right. has anyone challenged it yet no that that was okay. passed by the council seven to zero but when do you know when yes 21 okay. um yeah it was uh, last year and so that is already in effect it will affect businesses it will affect everything in scottsdale um, I do not believe anyone should be persecuted or anyone should be discriminated against. But we already have the First Amendment. We already have the, the uh, Civil Rights Act. We don't need to uh, then put another ordinance around. This is what's happening all over America is uh, wrapping around. Uh, and where does this stop, Greg? Where does it stop that this group is protected, but this one isn't? My rights as a believer, as a Christian, are not protected, but all these other subgroups. Do, and then where does it stop? Do you remember when we were kids, we would hear on the news about, like, there was a KKK march somewhere mm -hmm. in America and that the ACLU, which was primarily a bunch of Jewish attorneys, had stood up for them to have the right to march? Do you remember that going on back in the 70s? Mm-hmm. So I remember when I was a kid that going on, and I remember that being a subject in school where we would talk about why is it that primarily Jewish American attorneys are sticking up for the right of basically at the time was a dwindling group of white Aryan nation people. And they were making a really good point that the ACLU has forgotten. The really good point is we can't be thought police and it's okay to know who the bad guys are. So now we're trying to make, we're, we're, we're subjective thought crimes. We're, we're making policy around potential thought crimes mm -hmm. and we're starting to do this kind of weird Orwellian making it illegal to think a certain way just because it may not be popular. Yes. And that's what's spooky about it. Yeah. You know, like, you know what? If you want to discriminate discriminate against someone, that's your right to give it a try. I, I don't support it, but well, let's see, who are you? Let's see who you are. Fantastic. Just because a bunch of marms on the damn Scottsdale Council have said that it's illegal to do that it doesn't stop people from discriminating what it does it just opens up this spot for to be for you to be baselessly charged against it if someone doesn't like you and that's, well, that's what the hard me part right there is that um we every group should be protected i mean my rights as a believer in terms of baking a cake or anything like that uh, they say well it doesn't really you know it 
the businesses aren't going to be affected, but how do we know that? And so it starts there at the city level, school board, city council. Uh, actually, city council is a, is a power position because 241,000 people live in Scottsdale. So you've got seven people making all the decisions, basically, for 241,000 people. So what gets built, uh, what gets developed, it's it's uh, actually a real power position that most people don't realize. Your state senators or your your uh, your other representatives, you know, they're a part of a, a large group that has to vote on different laws, which is great. Um, but we've got to realize that city council. I mean, look at what's happened to Phoenix, Tempe. They've built all these high-rise, high-density apartment buildings. And um, that brings in more, uh, it is statistically, that it brings in more crime, traffic. You've got people moving in that don't have skin in the game. I was a, uh, I was a business owner by the time I was 23. We own the largest sports medicine weight training facility in the nation. And... Uh, what, so what, what place is that? It, it was John Cole Systems. Okay. And um, we trained all the N NFL players, Phoenix Suns, ASU. Um, and and, and we rebuilt. Existence? No, no, that was, uh, we owned that for 10 years, but uh, John has passed on. But um, was that your husband or something? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so it, we were in the community. We, we had mayors work out there. We had governors. We had all kinds of people work out at our facility in Scottsdale. So I was a business owner at 23. I owned my first home when I was 21. And then I bought my second one when I was 23. So, and being a business owner. And I have seen the changes in Scottsdale, but I think everyone should be a homeowner. I don't discriminate against that. And we have what's called, Greg, affordable housing. That's Section 8 housing, where basically. Is, where is that in Scottsdale? That's what they want to propose, oh. affordable housing. Right. Actually, they have a $10 million budget right now for that. And the, it's under the guise of, um, of uh, doing this for our first responders, our police, our nurses. But, but where does that stop? Then you, so you're you're saying that the city has to subsidize uh, apartments or you know that kind of thing, and it's really just a developer's dream is to bring in all these apartment buildings, and um, they're big ugly boxes. Scottsdale, as you know, if you grew up here, is um, a certain um, it's a certain architecture and feeling. The West well, most let Western me just say time. it for everyone who doesn't know. If you mm -hmm. haven't golfed out here, it's one of the best looking, well heeled cities in America. It's snooty as hell, and uh, and that's the problem. The mm -hmm. problem is snooty, horsey, and and commie are all banging into each other <laughs> right now. That's what I see going on. Yeah. Well, I I guess I never thought of it as snooty. It's I, pretty snooty. Well, I had some mean girl snooties in high school and now they love me you well, know after my sister well, you know, i became famous because i was in media as well so the, the mean girls are on the city council now <laughs> yeah, I, I understand i mean that's the deal it is, it is snooty and i I've, I've dealt with it my whole life so yeah. um as one of the guys who like to keep it i liked it when it was a cow town i liked it when it was yes, more western than it yeah, is it's beautiful. but it has gotten it's definitely more rodeo drive now than it than than mm -hmm. it is cow town it used yeah. to be very cow town yeah Okay, so um, you are, um, all right, so when you were younger, you were in the sports medicine business with your husband. Um, mm -hmm. And also, um, I did um, Christian television as well, Greg. I, w I had my own TV show um, when I was 26. and uh, Was that here in town? No, it was a national TV show. Okay. It was faith-based. I taught the Bible as well as then I used gospel music and worked out on the beach and I was, um, you know, it was, it was one of the, the largest um, national television shows, Get in Shape with Pamela Carter. I don't know if anyone would remember, but that was back, back a few years after I owned the gym. Then I was offered a, um, a television show, and then I went on for TBN, CBN, 
and produce, directed television. I was the station manager here for KPAZ television. I, I as wouldn't well. have watched that unless you had a really hot workout outfit. I on. did. It, oh my well, god! Well, it wasn't I really. Prob- I probably did. I feel really <laughs> embarrassed. Right no, now. it really wasn't hot. It was. I I tried to be as modest as I could because it was Christian. But um, did you wear leg warmers? Yes. Because oh, I, I, I leg warmers would always get my attention for a second. I'd be like, okay, these are hiding the legs. I'm skipping. No, these. I had mine way down on my head toward the ankle. Oh, you, so you wore them super low. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, so. cool. Um, so um, a broadcast background and uh, did have where else have you lived in the U.S. besides here? I moved to Kansas City, Missouri. And I moved, actually moved to L.A., and that's where I filmed my shows on the beach, and then moved to uh, Kansas City, Missouri. I got my Bible um, degree. I have a, ma- a master's in mass communications as well as in um, biblical studies. So I've really been a proponent of studying Scripture in the original Hebrew and Greek. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. <laughs> what does the word bara mean? Bara? Bara. Um, it's something I can take off by snapping my left hand <laughs> through a shirt. <laughs> That's a Hebrew word for created out of nothing. So I would say to you... That I you, specialize in bara. Yes, you do. And bara. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a twofer yeah. with me, sports That's fan. That's right. That's right. So, um, Pam, what made you decide you wanted to run for city council? Well, I did work the um, Trump... Um, campaign in 2020. I mm-hmm. was the faith director. I did Women for Trump, um, Pro-Life Voices. I'm very pro-life. And um, it was a very, uh, what an amazing team I worked with. I mean, it makes me want to cry. We worked so hard. We worked our, our hearts out for President Trump. We we knocked on doors in 115 degrees. We, we you know, I was in charge of all the uh, faith a community. I led prayer and Bible study for the staff as well as all of our volunteers. And um, so that was back in the, the days when uh, we weren't allowed to be out and about. So we did a lot of Zoom. But then it, when all that opened up, it was great to be with people and attend all the rallies. It was just an exciting time. And so when that uh, happened, the way it happened, um, I you know, I just thought I would, you know, I needed to do something for my country. And as I was praying one day, um, I said, okay, God, what do you want me to do? And I just heard the word counsel. I mean, because I pray a lot and I listen. And I heard the word counsel. And I went, Oh, you want me to run for office? Okay. Maybe she meant she wanted you to be a counselor. I know, I know. So I had heard about the city council, didn't know much about it. But, um, I, you know, I was more involved in, in uh, state politics as well as national politics. So I um, I said, okay, God, I need a scripture for that. Of course, my Bible's sitting right there on my on my car. And I opened it up, and it was Song of Solomon, my, one, my favorite book in the Bible, one of them. And it said, Arise, my beloved, and come away with me. For lo, the winter is over and past, and the time of singing has come. Arise and come away. And then I opened the next Chap, um, the next chapter of my Bible, and it was counsel, about the counsel of the Lord. So I knew I was hearing. I went down immediately that week, filed all my p- paperwork. I had to get a thousand signatures to get on the ballot. So yeah. yeah. So I was out there meeting people. I met one of my uh, best volunteers getting signatures at the C2 Tactical, and I want to give them a shout out. Nice. They let me um, stand there, had a table, and was able to talk to voters about my Second Amendment um, stance. I am strong Second Amendment, and I love what you're doing here, Greg. Um, Let's get into some uh, meat and potatoes. Um, what's the meat and potatoes <laughs> so what is the, the the city is proposing some high-rise low-income housing right in Scottsdale well they 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 bring it up all the time okay. let's just say that um, but the main thing is they want to build um, these huge ri- high rises the developers are coming in with millions of dollars just um, just la- the last few months, $50 million is already in the budget, $2.1 billion budget for Scottsdale right now. But what they're doing is they're spending, just because we have the money in the budget, 
doesn't mean we go out and spend. So what the developers do is they come in with these ugly 300 unit high rises, 70, the, the code in Scottsdale is 25 to 36 feet. Sometimes you can up zone it if it has some um, retail space as well. But they're trying to, to pass a lot of this, plus the affordable housing under the guise that they're, you know, but there's only gonna be a few that are even affordable. Not everyone can live in Scottsdale. And, you know, that's what happened to Phoenix. That, that's what happened to Tempe. They built all these apartment apartment buildings. There's 10,000 already on the books, 10,000 apartment units already on the books. They don't need to build more apartments. And all that's going to do is, uh, statistically is bring in more crime and more traffic. Think about 300 people live and probably 600 people living in a small space so that's density then there's the high rise and that's what makes the developers money then they get out of town and we're stuck with the traffic and the right you know. yeah so and i'm also very concerned greg about the sex trafficking uh homelessness is increasing in scottsdale and talk to me about sex trafficking um, uh, how's that w what's your awareness of that going on in scottsdale and how is it well, they just arrested 118 people for human trafficking, and some of that was in Scottsdale. I happen to know a girl who was trafficked right right in Scottsdale near her neighborhood. So it is happening. The cartels are coming in to Old Town. They're wanting to destroy Old Town, knock all of it down. I am a strong proponent of our rich heritage here in Scottsdale. But what's happening is the cartels are coming in, fentanyl's coming in, and it is happening right here in Scottsdale. So it's not, um, Phoenix is one of the highest, um, the highest uh, statistically for sex trafficking. So all really you have to do is, is come into Scottsdale from Phoenix. So it is happening, but I'm the only one, I'm the only candidate that spoke about sex trafficking, homelessness, crime. Um, now kind of the rest of the candidates jumped on that. What do you propose way. about the homelessness? Because I see it as a blight across the country right now. And I certainly see it everywhere I go in Phoenix. I mean, there's just homeless people everywhere. If you build it, they will come. If you build a homeless shelter, they will come. We need to work with our agencies that are already in place, Greg, because we've got, we have, um, the uh, different agencies already in place that that work with the poor and I actually was on the I am on the board of help for kids I worked with with the at-risk youth and families we gave we did food boxes I think we should have the ability to feed those people but to allow what's happened in Phoenix in Scottsdale um, I am a definite no we already we, we just what do you do to stop it well, to stop it, we need to enforce um, our police force. We already have ordinances against trespassing. I think those need to be enforced more. Panhandling is a problem. So um, vacancy and panhandling, you say enforce, mm -hmm. lock them up, make them make change, or make them go elsewhere. Well, I think that um, we need to have work programs. I think um, if they're truly, truly homeless and not just standing on the street, I, I see a lot of people. I first the first thing I do, Greg, is look at their shoes, and look at the you know do they have a bicycle around the corner? This is a, this is a, and a lot of our, our winter visitors they don't get it. They don't know you know they don't have to give money to these folks. If you're truly homeless, there are agencies, and we did pass some legislation, some uh, money for to help the Big Brothers and um, Phoenix Rescue Mission. Those people can deal with feeding and and then bringing in, a, I don't believe that we should build any kind of homeless shelter in, in Scottsdale. Because one thing, for one thing, it's gonna stop tourism. If you see someone sleeping on the yeah, on a bench, um, the tourists are not gonna come. I am uh, also endorsed by, um, one of the largest tour companies, um, Detours American West. They have endorsed my campaign. I'm endorsed by Senator Nancy Bardo, Maria Sims, um, and uh, just got the endorsement 
from Charlie Kirk for my campaign for Scottsdale City Council. But I think working with our legislators, too, there needs to be a blanket, something that we can do about the homeless problem. But I want to help those who truly can't help themselves. You know, if they've been injured in an accident or war or veterans, I believe those people should be helped. But I believe in work programs. Well, you know, it's funny. I have a very different take on this than everybody that's come in here over the last okay. year interviewing them. Okay. And what I see is absolute drug addiction and yep. abandonment of responsibility. Right. I do not see mm-hmm. the failure of society. I see mm-hmm. individuals who have not been held accountable, and I see it everywhere. Yep. And I see some mental health Clearly, right. uh, there's some mental health issues. But when, uh, you know, I was talking to uh, one of the Phoenix City Council members and they were telling me about this zone and this homeless area down in Phoenix that they've put together that oh. is a pet project of the mayor's. Um, there actually is like a fiefdom down there. And the lady who's been there the longest, she's the most senior. She's the queen of the homeless. So they've established this crazy pecking order, almost like a, what's that... Um, bunch that dresses up like it's medieval times and they yes you know what i'm talking about the mm-hmm. one out in the uh east valley bobby what is that the renaissance people you know yeah. they have their own little right. fiefdom they, they right. kind of make right. fun it's very right. tongue-in-cheek right. the homeless are really serious about it mm-hmm. i see all along the freeway corridors across the whole town there's just zombies at every intersection well i think you're totally right and that's my feeling i think compassion but you have to hold people accountable. I am in total agreement with that. And so that's why I'm in agreement with a work program if people really want to work. Yeah, it, but know, then on the other hand, I think there's just a lot of irresponsibility. I totally agree with you. You, you know, your, your uh, first statement you said is there's lots of agencies to deal with this because since the Johnson administration, we've thrown a trillion dollars at this nationally and we've affected the needle almost nothing. And, uh, and, and so what we see is... We know, we all know this. Everybody in this country has been touched at some level in their extended family. Somebody has had an alcohol or drug problem, right. drug addiction right. problem. And there's always an enabler yep. until that system breaks down exactly. and they go too far. Mm-hmm. And then they, now they say, then they say, then it requires tough love mm-hmm. and you have to hit rock bottom right. to find recovery. As a society, we're not holding people accountable. We're not. And so we're, we're elevating them from rock bottom and they just chug along in this fail zone. And I, 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 I blame what's going on on every street corner in America on the weakness of our voters not holding people accountable and yes. repeating stupid phrases like defund the police and all of that insanity. Well, I am in favor of uh, better police and fully funding, fully staffing our police force, we have the short-term rentals also coming in. And that is a big problem for a lot of voters. Um, But I'm in agreement. Um, But how, in your opinion, how would you handle the homeless problem? What would you do? Well, you know, it's... I know know I'm the interviewee here. No, 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 it's okay. I mean, I've thought a lot about this. You know, it's it's a two-pronged approach. Mm -hmm. We have a national border problem, which is allowing crazy amounts of free drugs to get in and as a border state we have to deal with it we're on the front lines of this okay so the first thing is we have to work in some way and hold accountable washington dc for what's going on at the border when trump was in office this wasn't the case i know whether you don't like you know there's a lot of people i hear people say oh he's he's a fool he's this that and the other said okay name one bad thing he did right and they they say some made-up thing that's been disproven and i go russia Okay, <laughs> you don't like his hair. You yeah. think he's a brash New Yorker. Okay, yeah. we haven't elected many New yeah. Yorkers yeah. to the federal office, right. okay? Right. Um, so, uh, I mean, one is, I, I think part of our problem here is just splash over from the craziness at the border, but we can't just blame them. Um, we've also become a sanctuary city. We're, we are a sanctuary city, and we have elected a Democrat mayor yep. in both of our major cities. Yep. In all three of our major cities, we exactly. have a Democrat mayor. Exactly. We we deserve this. And because, you know what? Mayors are very powerful, too. Super powerful. And, and, and a lot of people don't realize when they elect the mayor, he can shut down the whole city. He can By do fiat. A, yes. By fiat. And yep. it's very hard to sue them. It's mm-hmm. not like the feds right. where there's all this money nationally waiting to come in and attack Washington. Exactly. There's not a lot of money in PAC sitting to get the Phoenix mayor. Right. But she's a Marxist. We've right. got a Marxist in power. Right. And she's building homeless towns in Phoenix. Well, because, it, because she's thinking about it like a mommy instead of like a government. 
Right. And that's the, you know, this is my biggest challenge with women in politics is their wonderful soft hearts that are good for raising children are not great for holding a town accountable for bad behavior. I'm in agreement. Well, I'm a woman. <laughs> I think I'm a woman. So, I mean, I want you to go and drop the hammer. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, look, if I, I live, my, my, I'm in, I just moved to, um, I'm right across from the boulders on Black Mountain oh, there. No, so I think that's area. carefree, Could but be. it is. Um, but you know, like I've got neighbors who vote in Scottsdale. So, but I'm pretty sure I don't vote in Scottsdale personally, but I'm annoyed by the fact that the town is very, very much. It's a benefactor of capitalism and it's done so well. Mm -hmm. And now it's run by Marxists mm -hmm. and it drives me insane. Well, it's a very left leaning, um, council and mayor. And so you got seven mayors on the council, uh, seven people on the council, Seven right? people, one mayor. So there's six council members plus the mayor. So six, and what's mm -hmm. the split conservative? The split right now is one. It's one conservative? Mm hmm Yep, that's the split. That's why I jumped in. I felt, I really felt a calling to, to oh my make goodness. a difference in the city. Even if I'm a voice, if I'm not even, I, I erase that word because I don't like what ifs and and buts. Um, I will be a voice. I will be a voice. And I will, I have talked to voters. I've actually knocked on doors, uh, Greg, and voters have cried about the changes in Scottsdale. Mm. They've cried on my shoulder. What can you do? Please help us um, stop all this uh, craziness. And let me just tell you about this um, on Pima Road. Yeah. They just passed. $50 million to build roundabouts, um, some crazy contract that you know there's kickbacks happening. I can't prove it, but it sure sounds like why do you have to widen Pima and build roundabouts when we already have a perfectly beautiful Functioning Pima? street. Yeah, yeah. But, but they're building roundabouts. They're destroying Hayden. They're narrowing Hayden, building. They want to build, make everybody bike and walk, and then it's it's like this smart city. They want to they want to confine everybody into this connectivity, this is sustainability. A, this is green bullshit. This it is, is just green. Let me bullshit. show you this. Let me show you this. Can can you? Yeah, I can read. Let me see what we got here. General plan. General plan. For and this is only two hundred pages of another five hundred. It's uh, oh yeah. It's just pictures, and everything's going to be wonderful. And and they hire just, a, a a company. To, and I so that's I, this. That's the planning commission, and the um, they sit and I, I did, put these words in like sustainability and connectivity. Like everybody's going to be one big happy family. It's discerning. It's 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 disconcerting. Disconcerting. To me. Yeah. Disconcerting. I you know what me. I this is almost. Well, this is and it says nothing basically it's obfuscation yeah it, what's funny is i've read several of these planning reports from the city of phoenix around the airport yeah. system because yeah. i was real involved in that as a pilot mm -hmm. for years mm -hmm. oh and, you're a pilot yeah and they okay. pay big money to these independent um consultant groups to come in and pen together a plan mm -hmm. and then they pick like okay we wanted to have a super green initiative over a 50-year plan and then everything has to dial into that or it exactly. doesn't get approved and then the next council goes well we've got the plan we paid for so we're really well and then they pass it the the voters pa uh, pass this general plan uh through 2035 but they can bring in mass transit they can do according to this it ha some projects still have to be passed by the council, but a lot of it they can just gratuitously pass. All you know, fifty million dollars for nothing. Thankfully, we have the Sonoran Mountain Preserve that um, right now is protected. Um, but I want to protect our heritage, Old Town, and uh, our ability to drive our cars. Did you ride horses when you were growing up out here? A little. Yeah. I wish I would have had like a big ranch i love horses <laughs> well, we didn't have a big ranch we just had an acre but i rode horses all over did you yeah oh, it was great i mean wonderful. scottsdale was a great childhood for me i rode motorcycles in all the horse alleys yeah. you know there's the alleys between all the acre properties that have foam poles down the middle of right. them so they were they were all sketched into the drawing for 
trash alleys. Yeah. Except they never got used that way. They made um, horse easements out of them. Right. Which for all of us uh, Arizona kids, it was a great, these are great ways to it's get out great, of town. It's really a great place to grow up and raise a family. It was, and, yeah, it was yeah, awesome. It, 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 um, I have fun memories. I, I am half Latina, but one of my best memories is um, we didn't speak Spanish in our home or anything. My grandmother lived in Globe, Arizona, which our mayor is from. Um, he did mentioned that to me anyway um but i loved um going to globe and i have a huge um hispanic side of my family so those were some great memories family we were playing guitar they my uncles pl would play the guitars my my grandmother literally greg would make stacks of homemade tortillas and red chili and was that on your mom's side or your dad's my, side my mom's on your yeah mom's side. yeah and um, so those are some of my best memories were, were the uh, tortillas and um, just, you know, the, the Mexican culture is so rich. They love their families. They just don't know that they're not really Democrats. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> they love their families and children and they want, they want to work. That's one thing I know about um, my Latino heritage they want to work in fact one of my cousins married a guy from mexico and he got a signature a citizenship and now owns his own uh company is he a trumper uh, i don't well he's very very conservative let's just put it that way okay i wouldn't say he's a trumper but but he he worked and um, now he owns his own company. They're very wealthy, but he worked hard for it. And that's one thing I know about that culture. They work hard. You just told me that the Wonder Woman of my childhood is half Hispanic, and it's really uh, goes with the colors and the quinceada uh, head thing and the rope, the lasso, and all that. <laughs> now, it all, it's all making sense now. I've connected sense. a bunch of dots. Yeah. Uh, well, um, you, so. We've got the high rise, high density living. Sex trafficking is something you mm -hmm. want to make a point of going after by making sure the police mm -hmm. are fully funded. Uh, we know you've got um, concerns about the master plan and mass transit being brought into town. Mm -hmm. um, anything else uh, that's uh, got to be in your bonnet? Yeah, protect, preserve, and promote. Number one, we have to promote tourism. And the only way we're going to do that is by keeping our city safe from crime, homelessness, fully funding our police. The bar district actually is becoming an issue for some of the shop owners. A lot They don't feel safe. People don't even feel safe. So we need to fully fund our police. And the short-term rentals are really, really big right now. Uh, a big concern for those that live. Like all the Airbnb stuff yes, that's going on? Yes, it, and they bring in the escort services again, the sex trafficking, um, drugs, all of it is happening right in Scottsdale. So that's another concern mm -hmm. of mine is um, we, um, Senator Nancy Bardo and her team was instrumental in passing SB 1168, which will put a stricter ordinance on the short-term rentals, um, you know, just so they comply with the noise ordinances and all that. So yeah. I think we need to make sure that uh, th those neighborhoods are protected because a lot of a lot of neighbors are really having a hard time. Um, talk to us about your campaign. So you're running against a Democrat incumbent? No. No, actually, he's another. The two Democrat, well, we have one Republican that, that got in, and then the other one, Solange Whitehead, is a Democrat. Um, but the, my opponent is actually another Republican. But I believe I'm stronger. Wait a minute, hold on a sec. You have six council members. Mm -hmm, but there were only three seats available. But three seats are up. So there two have already, they were seated, they had enough votes to be seated. A so Republican. now there's only one seat left, and it's between myself and another opponent, which I'm not even going to mention. His okay, name. so let me pause. <laughs> so uh, a, a Democrat and a Republican got the two seats. Yep. And you're hoping to be uh, the Republican, and there is yes. also another Republican. Yes. So yes. the board will the the Scottsdale City Council will now be six to two instead of six to one. Mm -hmm. And was it six to one? Was it five to one before? And now it's going to be four to two. Mm -hmm. Is that what it was? Yep. Okay. It was. All right. Yeah. I just want to make sure I mm -hmm. was repeating. We were that right. trying to get all three of us and the Republicans, but the way the vote went, um, 
the two incumbents were seated, and then now uh, myself and another person uh, are running, doing, a, having a runoff. But my, I love, I I feel like I'm out in the community. I had I was um, working with the community when I was station manager for KPAZ Television. I had governors, mayors, politicians on my TV show. I filmed a lot of TV, was a producer, director, but I did a lot of community program, community outreach. I'm also on the board of Help for Kids, which I told you we is a community outreach. But um, I feel like I'm a stronger conservative, and I will fight for Scottsdale. I will fight to make sure it stays safe, secure, and that our morality is preserved. Because I believe, yeah, you can be against the high do- high rise, high density development, but if you're not strong in the moral issues, it's going to still be a liberal slide. So, so I feel like I'm stronger in that area. I think one of the insidious rots that's destroying our country to its core besides the press not doing its job is conservative Republicans Mm -hmm. not being conservative Republicans. And I, I, I talk to people all the time and I try to make this analogy. If somebody comes to you and says, Hey, we're going to burn down your house. We all agree on it. We want your vote to burn down your house. Mm -hmm. You don't go, okay, well let's maybe just burn down the garage. That's what's going on with conservatives. Um, Mm -hmm. Republicans have, they, they think it's about compromise. And compromise, I think, is the wrong approach because if they're proposing insanity mm-hmm. and we compromise even anywhere, even 10% anywhere. a year, that right. means in 10 years, we're batshit crazy. Right. And right. that's what's going on with, with Marxists. They propose insanity that we visibly know doesn't work. We've seen it not work everywhere. And then somebody decides, oh, we got to compromise to get something done. And we do partial crazy. Right. It's the, it's nuts. We well, need it is the real Marxist. people fighting. Right. And um, I fought my whole life um, as a Republican. I've stood strong on my values. Um, I'm pro, pro-life, pro uh, pro-family. I have fought for my conservative values and um, fought on several campaigns for the same thing. I'm not going to change now. But I feel like, um, you know, it's the classic deconstructionism of um, Saul Alinsky, as you know, and Barack Obama, who want to deconstruct our neighborhoods Mm -hmm. and bring in those apartments. Then you've got all these, uh, really, it's a transient lifestyle, not all apartment dwellers. I call it the urban dwellers. They want to bring in the urban urban jungle and... Um, make us just like every other city. Scottsdale yeah. isn't every other city. It's not well, any town USA. Let's take a little pivot to something that honestly is probably not going to matter that much so we can talk about it a little sure. deeper. I know it matters to you personally, uh, probably very heavily, but it won't matter because you're not going to probably get to rule on right. it in any way. Right. Um, obviously, Roe v. Wade was kicked over. Um, a dumb decision, not because it had anything to do with abortion, just radical overreach of the Supreme Court, mm-hmm. which has been tearing at this fabric of our country mm-hmm. for 50 years right. because right. that's not what they're supposed to do. They're, we legislate from the legislature so we can hold them accountable. Right. We do not legislate from the this, bench. Exactly. They have balls and strikes is what they're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. So they must have gotten bored with balls and strikes. Um, what do you think is going to uh, happen here in Arizona? I mean, Brnovich obviously made a hard tack to the conservative Christians while he was trying to run for governor. Obviously, that, that's not or uh, uh, run for Senate. Senate. That's not going to happen, clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's talking about this 1907 territorial like zero abortion law. Um, that's clearly going to get challenged. We saw what happened in Can- Kansas a couple weeks ago. There's already very moderate... Um, very centrist, moderate abortion legislature happening nationwide mm-hmm. because now the what's supposed to happen back in 1972 is happening now. Mm-hmm. There's a fight going on everywhere, yeah, and and it's substantive. We've all been able to hide behind the Supreme Court mm-hmm. for 50 years and be radical, yeah. But right. now we've got it, to fight. We've so got to continue to fight in our. What do you think is going to happen? Because they're not going to have no they. they Arizona, in Arizona, it will not come down no abortion. No, mm-hmm. You know that. Yeah. Because 85% of Arizonans agree on a very 
specific window huh. between between Rape heartbeat and incest, are you no between about heartbeat her? and viability. Oh, oh. Eighty-five percent of Arizonans agree mm-hmm. on some sort of choice around there. Right. I mean, that's a big majority. Right. Um, so my question is, what do you think is going to end up happening? You've talked to a lot of politicians. You've been in the political world now, running around talking to everybody. What do I you think, think really is going to happen? Well, I can't um, predict how our legislators are going to legislate. That's what I want you to do. I want your prediction. Come on. <laughs> I got my listen. I have a lasso of power too. All right. It just says well, electrons. I, in I it. am. I am. My prayer is that we'll stand strong on abortion. Because I feel like every life should be protected. I understand that. But now back to Earth. What do you think is really going to happen? <laughs> well, th- I think perhaps the uh, we will come down on um, rape and incest, maybe. Rape, oh, so you think it, it's going to be an outright it could a, a be, ban except for rape and incest? Well, or the, um, you know, hopefully we will stand and not allow uh, 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 any abortion. Okay, so hold on, hold on. Let's stop for but a second. You're, I'm not you're asking right. you for your vote. I'm asking, I'm not asking what your vote would be. I know what your vote would be. Okay. You didn't have to tell me. Okay. And and you're not, no one's going to elect you on this because you don't get a say No, I this. don't get a say in Scott's Okay, so now we're free to actually speculate about okay. what might actually happen. Well, I do believe there'll probably be some type of legislation that uh, now we do already have the no abortion situation from you know early 1900s um or is it 1800 it's 1907 yeah 1900s um so we can stand strong on that or there could be some exception made Here's, th- here's my prediction. You want my prediction? Uh, go ahead. All right. My prediction is somewhere between the heartbeat and the 12 week uh, window is going to be uh, um, abortion up to that point, is my guess. That's mm-hmm. definitely where the polls say Arizona's um, sentiments are. So we'll, right. we'll see what happens. I think it's going to be a, I think, it, I think I will be stunned if we don't have a 12 week uh, abortion bill in this state. I would be grateful for, for saving any life. Yeah, you know, but um, you know the big so. thing is to actually have the conversation now because we mm-hmm. haven't been having a conversation at all. You're right because we have hidden behind we the hidden. Roe v. Wade. Situation. What's funny now is how many conservatives I've talked to and posed this question to, who've been just staunch, and now they're like, oh, and and they're in the Arizona State Legislature this next session, mm-hmm. and they're going, oh, and I, I'm like, hey. You don't get to say that anymore. It's now in your hands. So you're running. We're and not not you. I'm just saying these folks have had in. What do you think? Because it's time. And I know you've got a daughter and a wife. I I mean I've got all kinds of women in my life who lean in me in different directions. What do you think? Real stop stop saying one or the other. And what's interesting is how much compromise I'm hearing people. Well, and I I'm just saying if I were in that position, Greg, yeah. I would say no on any abortion just because i believe i know that yeah so that's my opinion yeah. that is my belief and i believe every life is sacred i think every life was written uh, god wrote a book in psalm 139 about every life has a destiny has a purpose and god knows every hair on our head and okay. i believe every life is precious so that i you know i can't say what others will vote and I know you. That you, was less of a uh, position, uh, opinion position, than it was a political discussion. Okay, political discussion. Yeah, I, it probably will fall somewhere in between, but that's my personal okay belief. Fair enough. Anything else you'd like to cover? I mean, let's talk about if somebody wants to support you, where they can yes, get to do that. Yes, please. Okay? I do need um, donations for signage. I had all my signs stolen. My well, I think I have three or four left. We put them up all over. Uh, I have the most amazing, but I want to give a shout out to my volunteers. We worked so hard, knocked on doors, um, put up my signs and 4 a.m. in the morning and the hot sun. And um, uh, they were the most amazing team that got me over the finish line and and, um, makes me want to cry because of how hard they worked for me and for the Lord in this. I'm, you know, we lead a Bible group every week for my campaign um, and prayer. And so I just want to ask people for their donations if they want a conservative council in Scottsdale, PamelaCarter.com, PamelaCarter.com to volunteer, to be on my team. We're a very close-knit team. I want to give a shout-out to Deb Yetman. She's here with me, and she's been an amazing assistant and 
Okay, so That's PamelaCarter.com? PamelaCarter.com. And it's P-A-M-E-L-A-C-A-R-T-E-R. That's correct. Okay. And, PamelaCarter.com. If you want to donate, do so. Pamela Carter for Scottsdale City Council. And we will fight for you. Awesome. Um, unless there's nothing else, you know, unless there's something else you want to cover. No, I, I think we've covered just about everything. Awesome. Yes. Uh, you know, if, if you have an hour or 90 minutes to chat with somebody, there are so many things to talk about. I like to talk about the low-hanging fruit, the big, the, you know, mm -hmm. main. I've had people come in and they have all sorts of obscure goals. And I go, ah, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear about the manned flight you're going to run across town. Right. Let's talk about practical stuff. So I love hitting, you know, someone's kind of big three. And then I like to ask them about some political stuff. Well, it's, it's... I think you're a wonderful host and I <laughs> love your um, your tools. And uh, I have never seen such a process ever. It's crazy. Well, you do everything by hand here at Medford Tool. Yeah, it's crazy. Is it Medford Tool it's and Medford, Knife? It's Medford Knife. Medford Knife. Yeah. Knife. Okay. Well, I was going to correct you because I just said. Please do. I, I love to be corrected. I, I can be corrected. Um, but you have the most amazing um, place here. Everyone should have a tour. Well, I Hand tooled knives. Well, thanks for uh, coming in. I really appreciate you being here. You know, we have run into each other a whole bunch of times yes. in this cycle. Now we know each other. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So let me see. I'm trying to think of, I mean, several fundraisers. Did you go to a layman event? Did I see you at a layman yes. event? Okay. Yes. Cool. Well, listen, pleasure having you in. All Thanks right. for being here. Thank uh, you, Greg. And listen, Appreciate send our regards it. to your sister, you know, because so many of us well, fell in love with women. Well, she's on the, she's on the other side. I know. So you talk to her at Christmas. It's coming up. Yeah. Yeah, um, I've got I a, will. I've got a couple liberals in my family, and we're yeah. trying to figure out where to put their bodies when I off them, you know. <laughs> Thanks for being here. I know, her. I know. Thank uh, you, Greg. Appreciate it. Hey, sports fans, you know, um, they may have dressed her up and uh, we may have fallen in love with her sister, but she's the one we agree with, the conservative. That's right. Um, that's the way it goes. I mean, you can't ask your superheroes to actually agree with your politics. That's bananas. What am I thinking? Hey, appreciate you being here. All Thanks right. so much. God bless you. All right. Go. We're out, folks. All right. Bye-bye.